and now we're gonna show you what a turn looks like ship versus ship let's go on this side we have the French Navy on that side we have the Buccaneers we'll say it's the Buccaneers turn first every turn starts off with rotating your crew morale up one to its max printed value if it's already at the max printed value skip that step step two skill cards make sure you have three skill cards in your hand of course keep these concealed from the opposing player and use them when you see fit we already have three so we're going to skip this step step three event cards you're going to draw an event card and play out the card as it reads this one calls for us to place a storm token on the sea tiles we're going to place this storm token anywhere on the sea tile not currently occupied and right there and of course you want to do this in a manner that's advantageous to you because sometimes there are bonuses or penalties should you go over a event token step four actions you can have a movement action and an attack action you also have free actions these include harvesting goods discarding or drawing new mission cards collecting rewards for missions selling goods at ports transferring marks of victory from your ship to your home port this must be done while you're at your home port hexagon. So again, it's the Buccaneers turn. We're going to we're going to first look at the skill cards and see if there's any card that we might be able to use. The Buccaneer ship is right there and the French ship is right there. So ultimately we want to get in firing range and within firing arcs and I think that's a good place right there. So let's do movement. Given the wind direction, we currently have a speed of two because the wind is blowing this way using the wind vane and it's striking the right rear panel of the Buccaneer ship. So we can move two. However, if we pivot, we're allowed two pivots. We're gonna pivot one. Now the wind is striking us in the stern, the rear end of the ship, you're allowed to move three. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna move one, two, three. That completes our movement actions. Now we're also allowed an attack action. Again, using our skill cards, we can see if there's anything that may benefit us right now. And this one looks pretty good. Plus two cannon accuracy. So let's identify our firing arc from this ship to that ship. Ships have cannons on the side of their ship, so they shoot out in a cone-like fashion. Given that the ship is pointed that way, we know that we have firing arcs here, 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 and it creates a cone. Now to really understand our cannon stat, we're going to reference the ship card. We have a cannon range of one, two, three, and the range of four spaces is X'd out. That means we cannot fire that far. However, we can shoot one, two, or three spaces out. So let's count from this ship to the enemy ship. One, two, three. So it's three spaces away. We're gonna then go to the number of dice that we're gonna roll for that range, which is going to be two dice. And then the accuracy that we get for that range is three. So two dice with an accuracy of three. That's pretty good. We're gonna be shooting at this ship. Now, we get to choose which side of the ship we're shooting because given this angle, the front or the left side of the target ship is exposed. Generally speaking, the front and stern of ships are the weakest points of the ship. So we're gonna shoot the front of this target ship and how we determine what numbers we have to beat with our dice is we get the printed value of the front of the enemy ship plus its current D6. So four plus four equals eight. So we have to beat an eight with these dice. However, we have a bonus of plus three. So we really only need a five or better to do damage to the enemy ship. But also we have a skill card we can use, our plus two cannon accuracy. So we're gonna lay that down on the board it cost us two crew morale to execute so our six crew morale goes to a four and now we're at a plus five cannon accuracy and we have to be eight so that means we only need a three or better on these dice rolls so let's go ahead and shoot front of the french ship we have an 11 which is an absolute hit and we have a three remember ties from the attacking player are always a hit so that's two damage to the front of the enemy ship. So they rotate their D6 down from a four to a two. And that concludes the Buccaneer's turn. Now let's go for the French turn. 
Again, at the start of every turn, you raise your crew morale up one. We're currently at two, so we're gonna move it up to three. And we have a maximum printed value of four, so we cannot exceed that four. Next, we replenish any skill cards that we have used. We haven't used any skill cards, so we have these three skill cards in our hand. Again, keeping it discreet from the enemy player. Next, what we do is we draw an event card. Event cards could have anything from a positive or a negative effect on your ship or everyone's ship. This one reads, give this card to an enemy player now. When it is their turn, all of their ships have a maximum movement of one. So we're gonna give this card, which is clearly a penalty card, to the enemy player. On their next turn, their ships can only move a maximum of one. Now that we're done with that, we're allowed a movement action and an attack action. Let's look at our options. The enemy ship just fired at the front of our ship doing some damage, so it'd probably be best for us not to show the front of our ship and start doing damage ourselves to the enemy ship. And a little pro tip, if you look at your cannon stats, you want to find the sweet spot where you get the most number of dice with the most cannon accuracy and plan to place your ship in those strategic locations to do the maximum amount of damage. So it looks like for us, three spaces and four spaces away are our sweet spots. However, we want to stay away from the enemy ship because it looks like they can do really good damage up close. Knowing that information, we can pivot one and move forward one, and then we're counting how many spaces away from the target ship that, they, that the enemy ship is. And if you're ever unsure, you can simply measure from the center of your ship's hexagon to the center of the target ship's hexagon, in which case it is one, two, three spaces away. So we go over here to our cannon stats at three spaces away. We have three D12s and we have one accuracy. We don't have any skill cards that can help us out right now. In fact, we're going to discard a skill card, which you're allowed to do, and on your next turn, you draw new skill cards, again, to the maximum value in your hand, which is three. So the target ship is three spaces away. This crew token, which gives us a plus one cannon damage value. So whenever we're dishing out damage, we need to make sure that we're checking our crew tokens, our skill cards, and the event cards that may help or hinder us so we're getting max value for all of our cards so let's go ahead and do this right now we're three spaces away that's three dice with plus one accuracy now we only have one side of the enemy ship that we can shoot which is the right front side there's no other side that's exposed so we go over there to the enemy ship's card and they have four printed defense number plus the current d6 number of four that's just four plus four, and it equals eight. We need to beat eight. We're currently at a plus one accuracy. We have no skill cards, no event cards, no crew tokens that can help that accuracy out. So we really do need pretty good numbers to do some damage to the Buccaneer ship. We have to beat eight, so we need sevens or better with our accuracy modifier. So seven or better. Nine, a six, and a four. We only do one damage to the enemy ship. These two are fails. But remember, we have this crew token, which gives us a plus one cannon damage. So in fact, that's two damage to the right side or the starboard side of the enemy ship. So they rotate their D6 from four to a two. And that concludes the French ship's turn. Now let's get into a little bit more of advanced movements and some unique situations. Aside from the traditional movement action, First up, advanced ship movement actions. These type of actions cannot be combined with any other movement actions, crew tokens, skill cards. Also, they sacrifice the attack action to execute. So let's set this up. So let's say the French ship is trying to get away from the Buccaneer ship to finish a mission card or accomplish an event task. So let's execute one of these. We're gonna use tacking. Players may choose to move forward up to their allowed ship speed pivot one, then move forward one more space. Or pivot one, move forward their allowed ship speed, then pivot one more. So let's go ahead and do that. Given the wind direction, which is blowing to the side of the French ship, they can move a speed of one. Let's go through their skill cards and see if there's a card we can use. A wind change card might help us out, let's see. We're gonna play the wind change card. It cost us zero crew morale. And we're going to pivot the wind vane south. That's going to give us a movement of three. 
So let's go ahead and execute this movement. We're gonna move one, two. We don't have to use the entire movement, but then we'll pivot one and then move one more space. Again, that is called tacking. And next is ramming. Players may choose to ram another ship, but must announce they are doing so prior to the movement action. A ship must move a minimum of one space and end its movement with its bow facing an enemy ship. Ramming consumes the ship's movement action, but does not consume an attack action. You cannot ram sea monsters or forts. So given the French position and the buccaneer position, the French ship is unable to get in its ideal firing distance from the target ship, so it's gonna choose to ram its opponent. They're one space away, they're gonna announce that they're doing a ramming action and then move their ship forward. To resolve a ramming action, the initiating ramming ship uses its printed bow value, in this case four, plus a d12. The number the attacking ship is trying to beat is the target ship's printed point of contact armor and a d12. In this case, it would be the right side or the starboard side, which is four as well. Both sides roll their d12 and they both tie. And because their printed value is also the same, it is well and truly a tie. And just like anything that is a tie, it always goes to the attacking player. So in this case, the target ship receives one damage at its point of contact. So that D6 is rotated down one. And that is a quick look at what a turn looks like in British vs. Pirates Volume 2. Keep in mind there are many other combinations, movement combinations, ship combinations, skill cards, crew tokens, ship cards, that you can use to make a whole different kind of playing experience. So I hope you guys found that informative. If you have any other questions, you always can leave it in the comments section. But also check out our Facebook page, British vs. Pirates Cove, and our website, BritishVsPirates.com, for more information and to keep up to date. Thanks again so much for your support. I appreciate it. My name is Apollo. Keep rolling those dice, and I will see you on the high seas.